Okay, everybody. It's about time we talk about potions. Now, let's be real here. A lot of you go, you look at HP potions, you look at mana potions, and you're like, why do these cost a decent amount? I mean, they don't cost much, but it still adds up after a while, and it takes up a whole bunch of your weight. Well, here's the solution. The Infinite Potion. Now, the Infinite Potion is really good in every situation, really, as you basically just get a free infinite source of HP that you can just tell your fairy, use this, and it will do so. There are two different types of potions. The health potion, which is the red one as shown here, and then there's the blue one, which is the MP pot, or the mana pot. Both of these pots are very useful as one of them provides you with an infinite source of HP, while the other one provides you with an infinite source of mana. Now, these potions are really nice because it doesn't require that much weight out of you, rather than having to carry 200 health potions or 200 mana potions or hell, even a bit of both. You rather have to carry just one potion on you and use that one infinitely. The other upside to it is the fact that you also don't have to continue buying potions over and over and over again. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but eventually it will add up. Now, these potions are very useful, but how exactly do you get them, you might be asking. The overall answer really is just through grinding, but there is another way now. Not quite yet, though. Recently in the Heidel Ball, they announced that they are going to be putting potions up on the central marketplace. Now, it's unknown how exactly they're going to do it, and they have not implemented it in any region as of yet, but there is news of them doing this. Although, this will probably be very expensive, as to get a potion, you need three separate pieces. Each piece takes on average about 30 hours to get. That is why these potions are very sought after, and if they do go on the market, more like when they go on the market, because they probably will, it will definitely be very expensive. And now we need to talk about exactly what you need to do to get this pot. Both the Infinite Health Potion and the Infinite Mana Potion are different in the regards of how you get them. You do need to grind kind of the same on both, but the big difference is that the Infinite Health Potion, you only need one piece at a time, and there's three sizes to the potion. The Infinite Mana Potion, you need to get all of the pieces at the same time. With the Health Potion, there are three distinct pieces you need to get, with two separate things that come in later. And each of these pieces can be combined with a specific item that you talk to Merindora for. And each one you can use separately. So for example, let's say you're grinding Blood Wolves and you manage to get this drop, the Half Moon Cactinac. Once you get this drop, you can talk to Merindora, get a piece, and combine it together to make the small pot. Then let's say you're grinding Ronaros and you get this piece right here. You can then combine this later on to get the medium pot, and same with the Shurikon piece, you can combine this later on to get the large pot. Now, there is a difference between this and the Mono Potion. The Mono Potion requires five distinct things, these right here. You need to get them all and combine them at the same time. There is no small, medium, and large, it is just one potion. So you need to get every single piece before you can get the full potion. The pieces that you need for this pot specifically, the Mono Pot, is the Voltara's Clairvoyance, you need the Mark Thanan's Gland, and you need the Narc's Crimson Tear. The Narc's Crimson Tear comes from Munchum Forest, the Gland comes from Tashira Ruins, and the Clairvoyance comes from Navarn's Steep. Navarn's Steep is the one odd one out, because the rest of them, every one of the other pieces, requires you to grind a specific area, like Blood Wolves, Ronaros, Munchum's, Tira, or Shurkans. But the last piece, which comes from Navarne's Step, you need to hunt these monsters, and you can get the piece from just hunting them, but it's much faster to tan them for their resources. That allows you to get the pot. It is the only one that requires life scaling when it comes to grabbing this piece. Now, the Night Crow's Dawnstone, all it is is 100 dragon scale fossils, which is relatively cheap, roughly around 30 million or you could straight up grind for it, which you will probably get enough just by grinding out the potion pieces themselves if you do not end up selling the fossil. And then there's the Krogdala's Protection Zone, which is 100 Rogue Milling Earth Shards, or around 100 million points, both of which are not too expensive, but can be gathered. And then you combine all five pieces into the monopod. 
Now let's talk about how to specifically get these pieces. There's two ways to get them. You could get the full drop from the item. For example, let's say you're grinding shurikens and you get the shuriken spin it, however you pronounce it. But let's say you get that full drop from them. What you can do then is make the piece. But let's say you never get that full drop, and instead you get a hundred dragon's fang. These are the pity pieces. These pieces drop much more frequently than the full piece, and if you get a hundred of them, you can combine them to create the full piece. This is the same situation for every single zone that you do this in. The drop rates are roughly balanced, but majority of the time people have to grind all the way up to a hundred or get the drop sooner. It really just depends on your luck. Now, if you don't want to grind these specifically, there is something else you can do to get them. And that would be the weekly quests. Every single week you can grab one of these quests. You cannot grab all three of them, sadly, but you can grab one of the quests each week. And by doing the quest, you get to grab five of the pieces. And that would mean at most it would require 20 weeks for you to get one of the pieces from a spot. Now you could grind at the spot normally, and on average people get two to four pieces per hour by doing this. This is with extra drop rate, for example, if you're at an Arsha server, or different areas like that. But you can also just get it from this. So to do this quest, you need to kill a certain amount of them, meaning that you will still probably be getting drops from the monsters as you're doing the weekly. So by doing the weekly alone, on average, you'll be getting seven to nine pieces per week, meaning it should only take around 10 to 12 weeks for each one of these weekly quests. If you wanna grind beyond the weekly quest, you can indeed do that. Now, you can only take one of these three weekly quests each week, but it goes beyond that. You can only take either a health pot or a mana pot one. You cannot take both of them. Overall, both the mana pot and the health pot are very valuable things you need to grab when playing this game. The good news about it is you can start trying to grind it the moment you start playing, as seasonal gear far exceeds any of the AP requirements you're going to need for any of these spots, as well as any of the DP requirements. The only one that might give you some issues may be Muncham Forest, which shouldn't be too hard, as you can also grind Miramok Ruins off-season, which is quite a bit more difficult than Muncham Forest, and Forest Ronros, which is the exact same situation as Muncham Forest. You should also grind the Health Potion before you grind the Mana Potion, as even if you only get one piece and you still need to grind the other two, you can make the baseline the small health potion. While with the mana potion, you have to grind all of the pieces out before you can make any version of that potion. Now, whenever you get 100 pity or different things, you're going to need to talk to Marindora. So whenever you think that you're ready to do anything, talk to Marindora and she will tell you what you need to do. For example, if you get a piece, talk to Marindora. If you get 100 pity of an area, talk to Marindora. It's just roughly how long you want to commit to these areas. And the weekly quests for these areas can often be found at the node managers for them. For example, the Blood Wolf Settlement, the node manager that sits right up here, he gives the weekly for them. With Sherikans, Kamira over here gives the weekly for them. With Mon Shams, Viverza gives the weekly for them, and so on. All of them usually give the weekly for that region. Either way, this is how you grind the health and mana potion, and I wish you all luck on your goals and your venture throughout this game. Make sure you subscribe, leave a like, make sure you tell your friends about these videos, as I'm sure as they're starting they will like to know about them. Turn on notifications, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day, guys.